I was recently reading some retirement literature about different strategies to retire early. And one of the strategies that are often mentioned is what's called FIRE, which is financial independent, retire early. The idea behind this is that you live in a frugal lifestyle to varying degrees so that you can take any excess earnings you have, put them away into a retirement plan, 401k, savings, stocks, whatever, so that then you can retire early. So financial independence retire early or FIRE is the way to retire early. But as I was reading this, I thought it's also the way many people start their businesses. They build the capital they need to start that business using the FIRE approach. So the whole key is living frugally so that you can then raise capital. So let's get into how frugally do you have to live? Well, to define frugality, let's start with what the poverty level is. This chart shows what the poverty level is in the second column by the first column, which is the number of people in your household. So let's say there's three of you in the household. Then the poverty guideline in the United States is $21,330. If you wanted to live 25% above that, so in other words, not scraping and scraping everything, you'd be at 26,000, 27,000. And if you want to live at almost double the poverty line, you'd be up at about 37 or say $40,000. So if that's the base that we have to live at very frugally, what does the average American make? Well, the US Census Bureau says the average household income in the United States is $60,714 round that to 60,000. So that family of three who's living frugally at 175% above the poverty line has about $40,000 in expenses against an income of 60,000. That leaves $20,000 a year in capital. So how do you live on $40,000 a year? Here is a sample budget of what a $40,000 budget would look like. $12,000 in housing, $1,200 in transportation, $3,000, $4,000 in food, et cetera. So if you could live on this, you could raise about $15,000 to $20,000 a year to put towards the start of your business. Yeah! Now, it also varies by age. So this chart shows the average income in the United States by age. So if you're just starting out and you're 20 years old, you make 40000 and you spend 40000 even living frugally. It's going to take you a long time to save enough money to start your business. But as soon as you hit your mid-20s, and then once you're on up into 35 or 40 years of age, then you have enough between your income and living frugally that you can save up your starter money rather quickly. But you're probably not average. So what are the average costs to start a business? Well, Zipia has done research on what is the average cost in the United States of starting a new business. And the average cost falls somewhere between 30 and 40,000, depending on the kind of business that you're starting. Some are very low cost, low capital, some are much more. So let's take the high number of $40,000. So if you earn $60,000, $70,000 and you can live at say 40,000, then you can save enough money for your starting capital for your business in two to three years. But no one is average and certainly not you or me. What we need to do is to figure out what would be the startup cost for you and your business. Well, luckily, the Small Business Administration has this website where you can look up and determine the startup costs. In fact, if you click on this link on that site, you'll actually find a format, a chart that you can fill out to calculate your startup costs for the business that you're thinking about. So is this approach for you? There was the famous Stanford Marshmallow Experiment done in 1972 at Stanford University. In this study, they had small children who were offered a treat of a pretzel or a marshmallow. They could eat that pretzel or marshmallow right away, or if they could wait, they would get double. So they would get one marshmallow, but if they could wait some time, they could have a second marshmallow. How long did they have to wait? 15 minutes. The researcher would leave the room and they left cameras on. And it's fun to go on YouTube and look up the, the children in these experiments because some of them wanted that marshmallow so badly and they'd touch it and they'd 
touch it with their finger or their or their tongue or they take a little bit of bite out of it and some of them would hold their hands so they didn't have to take it. What they discovered was some children would eat that marshmallow right away and other children would do whatever they had to to delay that gratification and get that second marshmallow. Over time, they studied these children and the two marshmallow children, that is those who delayed gratification, turned out to have, by the time they're in high school, higher SAT scores. They had higher educational attainment, and they even had a better body mass index. In other words, these were the people who could delay their gratifications now for some result in the future, and it affected them tremendously. Now, this study has been repeated hundreds and hundreds of times, and what they found is it's not nearly as dramatic as that first study, but it is a major determinant of success. And in fact, not only just in high school SAT scores, but also in a career achievement throughout life. So the question for you is, once you do the math of here's how much I make, and here's how I live frugally, and here's how much it is to start my business, and what that math comes out to be, the key question for you is, are you a one marshmallow person or are you a two marshmallow person? If you can avoid instant gratification, and do delayed gratification for two to three years, you can have the money to follow that dream and start that business.